What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So I just wanted to make a quick video talking about some of the developments and the things that have happened with Blender and also with different add-ons this week. So I'm trying to get back to tutorials. I'm just ultra buried right now. So um, I apologize in advance, but I thought we could at least talk about some of the cool stuff that's going on. All right, so first off, Antoine Bagatini has uh, released a new version of Bag of Pie. It's currently in beta, but it has a rewritten IV generator. So basically what it is, is it's the Bag of Pie modifier that we already had. And so you can download Bag of Pie for free. So um, it's definitely worth checking out, but there's a new version out that's in beta that basically has improvements to the IV generation that's contained inside of the tool. So in addition to all the other cool tools that are contained inside of that, he's also upgraded the IV generator. So um, there's a new method, which is the projection method, which is really interesting, it like projects Ivy um, on a wall. So um, that's definitely interesting. And then there's some other things having to do with the Ivy as well. So if you're using Bagify, go check out the new version. Remember that this is in beta, so it's not 100% stable. Just be aware of that when you're working with it. So Sanctus has finally come out with this update to his procedural materials library. We've talked about this a little bit in the past. I'll link to that video in the notes down below. It's basically a procedural material generation add-on that comes with all these different materials that are all procedural, meaning that you can adjust them with different settings and other things like that. He's rolled out the new version, which has some additional materials. So like the old brick wall is one that I've been waiting on for a while. So that one's been rolled out as well as the old wood planks. So um, I really like working with these because they're just a lot of fun. You just adjust them with uh, with different sliders and other things like that inside of the uh, shader editor. And there's a lot of interesting things you can do with that. So if you do have this library, you should be able to download this update for free. If not, these procedural materials are a lot of fun. Like I've said in the past, because they are procedural, they're a little heavier in your scene, but they're definitely a lot of fun and they're also customizable. So I will link to the Sanctus library in the notes down below. All right, so this week we've actually been seeing a lot of interesting stuff coming out with geometry nodes and um, specifically the new shortest path node that's been released. I think this one might only be available in the new 3.4 alpha version of Blender. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but we've, seen a, but we've been seeing a lot of really interesting things in development from um, a lot of the people that have been doing kind of this, some of the cutting edge stuff in geometry nodes. So like, for example, Antoine Bagatini from Bagapai, he's been working on a mountain generator. So the mountain generator um, uses those nodes in order to generate the mountains. So it uses the shortest path node in order to do that. But then he's also working on a tool that allows you to add roads um, on the terrain. And notice how on the terrain, it's basically going through and it's finding the shortest path and generating those roads. So this is currently not something that he's released. I think a lot of people are just kind of playing around with it. So um, another one, so Jesse Mietnin, uh, sorry Jesse if I get your name wrong, but we've talked about some of his stuff before too. He's also been working with geometry nodes. He's been doing some interesting things with roads, but also testing out some things having to do with lightning. So there's a lot of really interesting things that people are doing with this. I'm really excited to see where this goes. So I'm another one from Jifco, um, using the shortest path node in order to add kind of this like corruption animation look in here. So again, just another amazing node coming out with geometry nodes. I think we're going to see some really cool stuff coming from this one in the future. The roads on terrain one is especially interesting to me. So I'm going to be keeping a close eye on the shortest path node development and what people are doing with it in the future. All right, so Art Native has rolled out a free planetary shaders pack. So this is a pack that basically simulates shaders that look like planets. So um, you can download that from Gumroad right here. You can just put in a value of zero, or if you like what he's doing, maybe make a donation to what he's doing. Um, that's kind of your choice. I will link to this in the notes down below, but basically it's a shader pack for creating different kinds of planets, other things like that. So these are procedural and um, you can adjust things like the scale, um, other things like that, um, in order to generate these different parts and pieces on on these planets, um, but it's got all of these different shaders that you can use in order to generate these different planet types. So if you do want to do any kind of planetary rendering, this could definitely be an interesting pack to pick up. So like I said, I'll link to that in the notes down below. All right, so Tree and Vegetation version five has been released. So we've talked about Tree and Vegetation before. It's basically a library of what it sounds like, trees and vegetation that you bring into Blender. So um, it's got not only a bunch of different assets, so 264 different assets, but it's also got things like uh, different seasons, right? So you can change your trees and other things between different seasons, other things like that. The new version of that has rolled out and that contains 38 new assets, 
as well as a new category of assets. So it's got different and new trees, as well as the ability to choose the location of your assets, which if you keep running out of hard drive space like me, um, is super helpful. Um, so yeah, if you have the older version, you should be able to download version five now. Um, if you are looking for a tree and vegetation add on this. So this one definitely has some high quality assets contained inside of it if you're looking for that. And then Samuel Berno has made his sound waveform display add-on available for free. So this is an add-on you can use if you're trying to sync something up to sound. And basically what it's gonna do is it's going to allow you to import the sound wave from inside the animation editor. So basically what that means is that means that you're gonna be able to see the sound inside of the editor. So if you're trying to like link things to the big movements of the sound or other things like that, this could be really useful. So if you're doing anything with sound and music and Blender, this could be something that's really helpful for you. I'll link to it in the notes down below. Let me know if there's interest and we can talk about how to set it up, that kind of thing. But for now, I just wanted to make it, make it known that it's available for free. So again, I apologize. I'm just super behind over here and I'm just trying to keep up with everything that's going on in the Blender world. It's amazing the amount of stuff that that's happening right now. I'm just trying to stay on top of it and help you stay on top of it as well. If you see anything interesting that's going on out in the Blender world, feel free to tell me about it in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.